Hey besties and thank you so much for joining me in today's video and welcome if you guys are new. I hope you guys are having a great 2024 so far. This is actually our first video on the channel in 2024 so super exciting and I hate to do this but the video is going to be about 2020 three releases and my thoughts on each fragrance I picked up. Super brief, of course, or we'd be here for forever. Really, I just want to talk about all the releases that came out and even the ones I didn't pick up, maybe the reasons that I didn't, if I'm going to get them in 2024, if they were likes, dislikes, loves, everything. I want to talk about everything with the 2023, kind of like a wrap up. So if that sounds interesting, definitely keep watching. Also, let me know down below, do you guys want to see more makeup content? Do you guys really love the fragrance? content let me know what you guys love on this channel get ready with me is whatever you guys want me to implement more I'm so excited though to leave you guys so much new content and also we're so close to 10,000 subscribers on YouTube so thank you guys so much for being so consistent and for always always continuing to support me I love you guys I will link all these fragrances down below but without further ado, let's jump into the 2023 releases and my thoughts on each. Before we jump in though, I do want to talk about my scent of the day, which is Dama Bianca from Zerzhov. I just got Lyra and also this one. If you guys saw my recent haul video, this fragrance has taken my freaking heart, you guys. It smells so beautiful, so ethereal, so light feminine so dainty so gorgeous this to me smells like an angel simply put everything about this i really love it falls in the same category as something like silk Sentol, but this is even a little bit more dreamy i love this so much it is creamy it's vanilla beautiful powdery florals there's musk there's malt this is just so pretty sandalwood at the base i cannot get enough of this and the kumquat and the lime combination is just top tier next up on my list is definitely italica now i don't want to harp too much on the fragrances i just put in my last video but you guys valentino donna born in roma intense came out in january of 2023 if i'm not mistaken and you guys as soon as i saw the bottle i thought that looks so sexy it looks so dark feminine it looks so beautiful and bold and just like very intriguing and i have to say it smells just like the bottle looks it smells expensive it smells sexy really really rich and like very intimidating to me this is not going to be for everybody it's definitely more mature than the original the original has more of like a candy sweetness to it it's still like a fruity floral but you really get like this sweet quality to it that you don't necessarily get in this this is more of like that rich bourbon vanilla that earthy jasmine warm warm amber and this really nice resinous benzoin this fragrance i love so much i think it smells so rich and expensive very confident kind of like confidence in a bottle this is so grown and sexy not going to be for everybody but when i first saw this launched i just knew i was going to love it i remember i went into ulta i put it all over my body i doused it up really good and i thought it was okay it's kind of hard to judge fragrances in ulta or sephora because there's so many other scents going on but when i opened the door to ulta to leave and i got that really beautiful whiff i immediately wanted to turn around the person i was with didn't want me to but next day you better believe I was back at that store and I did buy this full price this is just mm, so sexy and I got the biggest bottle because that's all they had at the moment plus I love having the cap then Versace Dylan purple is such a beautiful everyday staple this is for when you want to smell fresh clean out of the shower it has that shampooy vibe to it that I really enjoy this really beautiful juicy pear that I just crave within the fragrance some people perceive it as grape soda so I feel like you're either gonna get one of the two things for me this pulls like I said, fruity, floral, shampooy, little musky, little woody. 
This is just phenomenal, especially on the dry down. It's very musky. I love this so much for every single day, any occasion. It just smells really good. I will say I wish I got longer than like five hours of longevity, but for what this is, I do not care. I overspray, and I've had this one fluid ounce for a while now, and look at that dent, you guys. I love this also for the gym. It's so beautiful, so fresh and clean, and it honestly motivates me to get up at six in the morning and go to the gym because I get to smell this like every morning. Another early release is Florist from Ellis Brooklyn and to me this is a very likable floral fragrance for people that typically would shy away from floral fragrances because they're too sharp, they're too irritating. This is not stuffy at all. This is just very beautiful, very likable, a very pretty girl, easy reach type of fragrance that I just love so much in my collection. I actually tend to wear this when I'm going to like a doctor's appointment or when I'm running errands and I just want to smell very floral, a little citrusy. There's a bit of a fruity touch coming from the pear but more than anything to me it's just giving it more of a sweetness overall and this fragrance there's honeysuckle, there's gardenia, there is tuberose. It's just very pretty again, and you can't go wrong with it. It's something that's not irritating, but it's also not super unique to my collection, but I don't know. I think if the longevity and the performance overall was a little bit better, I would get a big bottle. I don't know. Maybe in the future, if I do see a good enough deal, I will pick up a full bottle because I really do love it. It's one of my favorite florals, but if I'm being honest, it's just... It doesn't have the best performance, you know, and for the price, mm, I need it to be a little bit better. Then, keeping with Ellis Brooklyn, Apple Love, which to me, when I first saw this launch, I thought it was going to smell so beautiful, and it definitely does. A lot of people were speculating that it would maybe smell like Eden Juicy Apple, and a lot of people were upset that it didn't. But for me personally, being somebody that already has Eden Juicy Apple, I wanted something different, and to me this is. This is a fruity floral fragrance that is sugary, kind of shampoo-y in the opening, but as it dries down you get more of that kind of like sensual musk with vanilla and sandalwood. It's just very nice to me, but I do have to say Again, the performance, even though this is definitely more unique, it adds more to my collection, the performance is still not there. So even though I do really like this, you guys, I have to say it's just a like. It can't be a love because it has to perform, and to me, this one just didn't. Um, but the smell of it, I mean, I've used this much. I love, I crave. I think it's so beautiful, not only for fall, but just for year-round, because like I said, I do also get kind of like a shampoo-y, fresh quality to it that I really enjoy. There's some citrus. It's kind of bright in that opening, and I love it. It's just that, again... The performance is not where I'd like it to be for it to be something I could consider getting a full bottle of. But with that being said, again, it does add more to my collection. I cannot stress that enough. I think this was actually a spring release. It's Yum Pistachio Gelato. And you guys, when the advertising came out for this fragrance, I, like the campaign, it had me so hungry. Let me read the notes. Pistachio Gelato, Hazelnut, Sweet Rum, Whipped Cream, Marshmallow, and Cotton Candy. And y'all... It had me ready to risk it all, had me ready to go to the gelato stand near me and just get like a pound of pistachio gelato. That's how hungry this fragrance had me, how good it had me going. This smells amazing. It's very yummy, you guys, but it does maintain this freshness to it that a lot of people do perceive as like a soapiness and when I first got it I did feel the same as I let my travel sit for longer because this is a new bottle so it's kind of funny because I am getting more of kind of like that shaving cream quality to the fragrance because this is newer but with my travel it's definitely more sweet with the gourmands but yeah, there's also this shampoo-y quality that people do get and I can definitely understand why. For me, I get a lot of the cotton candy. I do get the pistachio gelato. I don't necessarily feel like I'm feeling some rum, but I do get that creamy whipped cream. To me, this actually does remind me of like shaving cream with a whole bunch of yummy gourmands. So picture that and that is this. I also pick up on that 
hazelnut and overall I think it does smell delicious so if you are into a kind of fresher take on gourmands but still very sweet this is great especially for year round and I cannot wait for this bottle to get even sweeter mm, I love this next Kaoli fragrance to come out was Kaoli's the wedding silk scentol and also the velvet scentol I did skip on getting a big bottle of the velvet because when I did sample it I felt like it was super similar to Monger Lawn and I just ultimately love this one way more so I did skip on that one but I do think it's really beautiful and in the future if I do see a great sale I would 100% be open to buying that fragrance but this oh I've talked about it so much I always say close your eyes and picture the most beautiful woman in a room like breathtakingly beautiful doesn't try hard so effortlessly gorgeous and that is this fragrance it's so bubbly so beautiful so uplifting you get the florals you get the fruit you get the vanilla the musk the sandalwood this is just such a beautiful, crowd-pleasing, pretty girl fragrance that you cannot go wrong with. And when I saw the marketing, I kind of already knew it was going to be a hit. Champagne, I think it has it on the back too. Champagne, freesia, pre, uh, pink praline, lush nectarine, sandalwood, sugar musk, and so much more. And to me, this is just a fragrance you just like cannot beat. Thankfully, I think they're going to restock this year, so once they do, I have a feeling this bottle is going to be, like, so used just because I have been super stingy with using it. Then, as if two fragrances and one launch was not enough, they gave us the Oud Collection, which actually has four fragrances that they launched at the same time, which I thought was incredible. Apparently they've been working on it for years, which I do not doubt because that's a lot. I do have to say, none of these impress me as much as my um, Vanilla Royale, but these are still really beautiful. I love vanilla. Ooh, this one is a very expensive, sweet, powdery fragrance that I love. I think it smells very expensive because of the saffron, but you're also getting this beautiful vanilla sugar. And to me, it's that same vanilla sugar that you get in Royale. So if you didn't love Royale, you thought it was too much. Someone said in a recent comment they thought that fragrance was trying too hard. This one might be something for you then. I really do like this a lot it kind of reminds me of like holiday parties perfect for the colder weather and i don't know if i'll wear it as much um when it gets hotter but this for right now is beautiful then oudgasm cafe oud this is a really beautiful dry coffee rose geranium oud combination this is really pretty you guys everything about this i love it smells so expensive i've never tried like an oud coffee fragrance in the past i don't believe so i'm very happy about this one i still think it's very wearable this does have patchouli though so sometimes i do feel like for whatever reason between the oud and the patchouli it does smell like real close to earth like it smells very very earthy but you know i do still really enjoy it i do pull it off sometimes more than than others am I shaking like what's going on um but anyways yeah this is nice then oudgasm rose oud if you guys do love like rose oud fragrances I think you'd love this and I do find that this one is a bit more wearable because there is a beautiful note of peony in this one which I just love in my fragrances this is for sure for like a baddie then Kayali Eden sparkling lychee when I saw the campaign for this fragrance I was so excited this is very flirty this is very girly this is very very feminine it kind of reminds me of like girls just want to have fun you're hanging out with your friends you're catching up you're having good vibes this is so beautiful and I love the fact that the rose and the fragrance is not super mature to me the lychee is definitely the star of the show and it's very candy like and very sugary it almost reminds me of like a jolly rancher and as it dries down more you get that candied violet which I think is so beautiful within the fragrance as well as that sugary musk this is so nice and when I first saw it launched I was so excited because first of all the bottle is just so stunning and then second of all I love Eden Juicy Apple and this to me did not disappoint. The only area it did disappoint was the longevity of it. Not even the longevity, more so the projection and sillage. I just feel like that's not necessarily there the way I'd want it to be. But I do hope that maybe the longer I have it, 
the stronger it will get. Then Sakura Cherry Blossom from Jo Malone London. This was an earlier release. Well, I should say a re-release, but I, I don't know about the old formula, but this is really nice, you guys. I think it's very citrusy, very floral. It's a really beautiful combination of citruses with cherry blossom and rose. And I just love it. On the dry down though, I will say it gets more musky and more woody. But you still do feel the citrus and really the sakura cherry blossom and rose the whole way through. It's very clean and very soapy and beautiful. I wish I wore it more. Like I'm looking at the dent and I'm like, we need to use this more in 2024. But it's really pretty. It almost has like a sparkling nature. It has the note of mimosa that I love within my fragrances because I think it gives them like a very upbeat feel that I do get within this fragrance. Also like bergamot. So I do really enjoy this and I cannot wait to keep using it in 2024. Even more of course in the springtime. Then when I saw the Carolina Herrera Very Good Girl perfume, I was really really hoping that I would love it. The girl fragrances were not heavy on my radar until I saw this really beautiful heel. Let's be honest, pink is very much in right now. Definitely last year at this time, all the brands were jumping on the bandwagon and they still are. So anyways, the bottle definitely got me, but the smell sold me. This is so pretty and feminine. I always sing the same old song, so let me spare you. But just know if you're looking for something that is really beautiful pink floral citrusy, creamy vanilla, beautiful, beautiful florals, Ylang Ylang and Peony. And the Peony and the fragrance is just so gorgeously feminine. This is so lovely. Literally reminds me of the uh, color pink. It's flirty. It's girly. It is so just breathtaking. I have heard from other people this does smell like um, Mont Blanc Signature, but I've never smelled that fragrance and honestly, even though you guys recommend it, I kind of feel like it'd be a waste since y'all say this smells just alike. And for me, I have no issues with the longevity of this fragrance, so that is also a plus. It's so, so pretty. And fun fact, I got it for like $7 because I bought this one with my Ulta points. I will say I do prefer the bigger bottles because this is kind of rickety. Then I don't need a prince by my side to be a princess au fraiche from Killian. Princess in general is one of my favorite fragrances in my entire collection, literally top five. It is such a beautiful, fresh, easy reach gourmand for year round. I love it, but this one is even fresher. This is really beautiful and bright and citrusy, but then you also do have this really nice green tea note that I do feel like is pretty balancing between that marshmallow that for this fragrance is more so in the background and the citruses. This is really nice. You're getting the green tea, marshmallow, ginger, and the bergamot and everything about this I do enjoy except how intimate the projection is. Other than that, I do think it's pretty nice, um, but I do wish it was stronger. Anyways, it's really beautiful, and for me personally, if I do overspray, I can get a nice amount of hours, but I do feel like it could have been a little stronger, you know what I'm saying? Anyways, this is really nice, really refreshing, super beautiful for spring, and I cannot wait to wear it again. I do not like this bottle. I know some people love it. I hate it, but the smell inside is really nice. That is how I know the video is getting long. I just had to switch my SD cards. Ayer, 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 oh, hot dang. This is my jam. What? Oh, I haven't smelled this one in a while. This is Floral Street Sweet Almond Blossom. I do think this one came out in spring as well. It's really pretty you guys a great citrusy sweet fragrance that to me does not smell like almond it's not even in the notes but i really get the passion fruit and the pomelo which are my favorite notes within the fragrance along with of course the apple blossom this is so pretty on the dry down i do get the vanilla and the tonka bean so it's a little bit warmer but honestly this is a citrusy fragrance done absolutely right. Citrus, fruity floral, so pretty. And the passion fruit, if you guys love that note, I think you'd adore this fragrance. Um, yeah, it's just a pretty girl, easy reach, beautiful springtime staple. 
also great for summer. It didn't wow me, but I still think it's a really nice addition in my collection and it's not something that I would shy away getting a big bottle of, to be honest. It's just kind of funny because almond blossom. I'm not, I'm not finding the almond. Now Fleur father figure, for me this one was a dislike. I couldn't tell you what it is that I hate about the fragrance. Actually, I can. I think it's the combination of the fig and the orris. This fragrance kind of comes off a bit astringent on me and the same way I feel like sometimes Skylar Salt Air does, there's just something with the fragrance that as much as I really want to like it, I want to find it like very nice and like musky and like, you know, great for every day, fresh, but to me, again, it's just almost like astringent. There's something about the fragrance I'm pulling out and I do believe it's the fig and the orris. I don't always love orris that I'm really not liking here, so... Yeah, to me, it's not my favorite, and I would never get a full bottle of this. You might be thinking, Lindsay, why the heck is your travel spray so used up then? Because when I first opened it, I boop, and the whole top came off. So unfortunately, well, I mean, it doesn't matter. Um, it all went all over the place. Now, Sephora did send me a backup, but I don't want it. They were just like, well, it'd be better if we could send you a backup than a refund. And I didn't feel like going back and forth. So I said, fine. So hopefully someone in my family I can give this to. But yeah, it's not my favorite. I'm going to be honest and say that. I do love another fragrance from them that I did try this year. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. I did just look up the notes just to see. And yeah, the fig... Sometimes cassis I don't love in fragrances um, and even if you click on it, it says sometimes people say it can resemble cat piss. So could be the cassis for sure. I forgot about my paper. I have this paper that has the other launches that I decided to skip. I actually remember going into store and smelling three fragrances and wanting to walk out with at least one to review and I walked out with none. And that's not because they were all terrible, they just didn't like really grab me. So those are Lancome Dole Now. I remember smelling that fragrance and thinking that was the one at the very bottom of the pole. That one smelled... I just, I don't really love the flankers. I feel like it was nice, but it was kind of boring. And even more than being boring, there was something very off-putting and like sharp. I just remember smelling it and again, thinking absolutely not. So that one had vanilla, rose, and also orchid. Skipped on that very easily. Then Mugler's um, Angel Supra Floral. Floral. That one had notes of... Top notes of prickly pear and cactus flower, middle notes of jasmine sandback and immortelle. Probably saying that wrong, it looks like a floral. Then base notes of amber, musk, and desert rose. And I remember thinking it smelled really cool. Like I, I really thought about buying that one and also the next one we're gonna talk about. But ultimately, I just didn't think it was like my zhuzh. It was kind of fresh, kind of green. Definitely had that musk for sure, but you really got a heavy dose of the jasmine. So to me, this one was kind of easier to pass on. It wasn't something that I thought I'd really end up keeping in my collection, but it was something I did think was really interesting and maybe in the future I'll get a travel. It was nice, it just wasn't like 100% something I was in love with. Then number three, which I still kind of want, Gucci Flora Gorgeous Magnolia. That fragrance, you guys, it has a note of dewberry, which I think also adds to my liking of the fragrance. And of course, Magnolia, the notes are top notes of dewberry and coconut. I mean, that right there sells me. Middle notes of Magnolia, Jasmine Sandback, and Clary Sage. And base notes of musk, patchouli, and blonde woods, whatever that means. To me, I do get a good amount of the patchouli on the dry down, which is kind of why I was hesitant. But sometimes when I go in store and smell it, I get this really delicious creamy floral vibe that I love. I feel like the coconut has this really nice creamy like deliciousness to it and the dewberry I just love in my fragrances. So the magnolia is also really, really pretty. I also love that note. So I do think it's a very pretty girl fragrance that I am heavily debating buying in 2024. 
on the right sale so don't be shocked if that one comes into my collection later on even though I said I did pass on it that day that was for sure the one I really wanted and ultimately I think the reason I didn't get it is just because the patchouli I could really get on that dry down but then like I said sometimes I go in and spray it and I don't get that at all so I am highly considering it I do think it's very beautiful I even might like it more than the pink one but that one's also really nice another fragrance that I think did come out during this time is Parfums de Marly Valaya Valaya is one of those fragrances I've never smelled it in store and just ba based off the notes it doesn't seem like something I was willing to order online without actually smelling first in store and getting a good idea for if I think it's worth it because it does have aldehydes and as you guys know sometimes I do not love aldehydes in my fragrances but y'all the notes do sound really pretty top notes of aldehydes white peach bergamot and mandarin orange middle notes of orange blossom lily of the valley patalia vetiver nymphio Mahonia, base notes of musk and broxen and aki gaia wood and vanilla. So even though the notes seem really nice other than the um, aldehyde, sometimes that can just take over a little bit for me. So even though it sounds really nice, fresh, clean, like very beautiful for every day, I just don't know if it's something I'm going to love. I mean, Parfums de Marly, I typically do really enjoy their fragrances. The translucent white bottle, oh my goodness, it's giving bride to be. But it's just something I did decide to skip on because even like being honest if it does smell great and very fresh and beautiful I don't really love to spend so much money on fresh fragrances like I do on something like sexy like girly pretty fragrances or like gourmands just being honest with that so maybe I'll smell it and it'll totally win me over but as of right now I don't know like the description says musky citrusy white floral fresh aldehydic woody powdery ambery floral fruity so I need to smell it in store but as of right now it's something I'm not rushing to get and I definitely wasn't at the time either then Julia has a gun lust for sun this is the epitome of a summer fun day at the beach this is very energetic it's very bright it's very much like yeah, like it reminds me of like suntan lotion mixed with that salty sea breeze and it's just a very energetic, bright energy. I really do love this and every time I smell it, I just want to get my body moving. I want to get to the beach. You do get the white florals. Like this is very pretty to me and I do feel like every single time I wear it and it dries down, then it reminds me more of like a sunset watching the sunset after a really beautiful productive day at the beach and you just kind of have like that sweet salty musk with some vanilla this is so beautiful you guys on the dry down definitely does remind me of sunset or walking back to the car and still having like the beach residue all over your body just circulating in the air then burberry goddess this is such a lovely fragrance it's a beautiful fresher take on a vanilla there's three different types of vanilla including vanilla caviar there is this really beautiful no of ginger there's cacao and to me the lavender in this fragrance is done so beautifully just adding like an aromatic touch to the fragrance but not making it too musky and sharp this is so lovely you guys i every single time i wear this fragrance i get so happy and it's not as heavily ooey gooey sweet as you would think based off of the notes it's so beautiful it has a bit of elegance to it and also a bit of romance to me personally this is so nice and every time i smell it i just get giddy this is very very beautiful and though it does remind me of monger lawn this is sweeter i feel like in my last video so many of you guys said this was top three for 2023 for you and I can completely understand why another perfume that came out was Ariana Grande's cloud pink and when this first got released I was just so excited again because it's pink and I do really love the original cloud it claimed to be fruitier um, and a bit more fun for summer so actually I don't even think I think this was released in August, so I wished it would have been a little bit earlier, so I could have enjoyed it a bit more throughout the year. But anyways, this is very beautiful. It does remind me of the original, just creamier, 
a bit sweeter you really get this overdose of like the praline and it's so yummy within the fragrance as well as the coconut water this is just so yummy you guys so beautiful does have a tropical vibe for sure and to me if you do really love cloud but you want something that has a bit of like a fruity touch this is amazing i do have to tell you though on the dry down in my opinion the fruity notes kind of do you know go away but you're left with something that's so tasty so yummy you guys this is definitely one of my favorite fragrances from Ariana Grande yet. Then Jose Parfums Accident a la Vanille Creme de la Berry was actually released pretty early on, which I thought was interesting because this is very sweet, it's very gourmand, and to me way better suited for like fall and winter. For me in Florida, definitely a winter scent only if I try to wear it any other time unless I'm wearing it like inside the house when I'm all cozied up. It just doesn't really work for me. This is said to smell like cereal milk. For me, I do definitely get that. But then also strawberry cheesecake. This is so yummy. And when I saw the notes, I knew I had to get it. Like I said, as soon as I tried it, I did think it smelled amazing. But also that it needed to kind of sit for a while until it got colder in Florida. This is so yummy though, you guys. The notes are top notes of cheesecake, strawberry, and vanilla. Middle notes of vanilla whipped cream and sandalwood. And base notes of vanilla and styrax. Even though it's super, super sweet, I do think the styrax does save it a bit and gives it a little bit of like a resin because um it does like kind of burn my nose every time i smell it so yeah you do get that in the fragrance for sure but i mean you guys i'd be lying if i didn't say this does smell like food so get it at your own discretion something like burberry hurry elixir smells like for example a little bit more wearable than something like this to whereas you definitely like I said, if you're somewhere hot, might not want to put this on in the warmer weather, like period. I'm going to breeze on past Escapé Gourmand from Mesa Mataha. You guys know this is one of my favorite vanilla fragrances, or just in general, one of my favorite fragrances in my entire collection. This is so sweet, so beautiful. Everything about this fragrance I love, and yes, it does remind me of a creme brulee topping. This is so yummy. So thick, so dense, so tasty, you guys. I love this. This is just definitely a fragrance that made my 2023 really special. Every time I wear this, I get a compliment. Every time I wear this, I give myself a compliment. And I give the perfumer a massive compliment for this one. I wish there were more Mesa Mataha fragrances out there. Hopefully in 2024, we get some. Then House of Siage Hufflepuff. This is a fragrance I didn't buy when it first came out. I did get it on a sale, which is when I recommend getting House of Siage fragrances. But anyways, I love this citrus vanilla because there's coconut cream and there's also this really beautiful, unique peach. So it's just really good. It's airy, it's light, but it's also super scrumptious. So anytime I want a vanilla fragrance that's not super heavy, this is something I reach for and I just, ooh, I love this. I cannot wait to try more House of Siage, but again, it's gonna have to be on a sale because the prices are astronomical. Another fragrance I did go ahead and return was Prada Paradox Intense. I really did think it smelled so similar to the original upon the first initial blast of the fragrance, but as it dried down, it just got kind of smoky. The um, synthetic notes, the musky synthetic notes just got really weird for me, and I just found the fragrance overall to be very off-putting. Not to mention they took out the tangerine note that I love within Prada Paradox that I think just makes it so lovely and delicious. So to me, that warm floral fragrance I did go ahead and return, but I still did think it was okay. It's just that you guys I got told I smelled like an ashtray and once I smelled it on the dry down I truly did agree so you know if you do like Prada Paradox Intense and you want the amber more intensified you want the neroli more intensified you want like the synthetic notes to really show up there was this really beautiful vanilla within the fragrance as well, but ultimately I just could not do the smoky aspect as well as the weird synthetic notes, so I did return that and I don't regret anything. Then Replica on a day I smelled in store and I just really did not enjoy it. It smelled really aggressive. When I smelled it, I thought it was trying way, way, way too hard and 
I definitely passed on that fragrance. It just smelled like something that was going bad. So I did pass on that fragrance. Also Mermistere, it was very warm and spicy, but I just felt like for the price, it wasn't something I really loved. I wanted a bit more sweetness to come through. Also, um, Electric Cherry, that one smelled really amazing, you guys, but the price point was just, mmm. And then Electric Cherry, I remember, or sorry, uh, Cherry Smoke, I remember thinking it smelled so expensive. There's leather, smoke, and also saffron, so it better smell expensive, and I do believe it did. I smelled all these fragrances when I was really tipsy, um, except for Mermistier. Then um, Amouage I did go ahead and pass on because I was hearing a lot of people say that they did really enjoy the performance of the fragrance. It's spectacular, but that the actual smell was really not that great. And for me, it's like, why are we buying a fragrance based off just the performance if the smell is actually like not good? Which I've heard some people say they really like, but I've heard others say... It's just the performance for them. So I do want to try at least a sample in 2024 and make my own opinion. But at the time, I was just not really on board. And there were other fragrances that did pique my interest just a little bit more. Then from Parfums de Marly, Altair. I want to get this so bad in 2024. I hope it goes on a really good sale for me. It's musky, sweet, and spicy. So when you first do smell it, I can't understand why it does belong in the man's um, you know range but I do feel like on the dry down it gets sweeter and a bit more feminine so I really enjoyed the fragrance a lot. I feel like in the opening it does give man fresh out the shower vibes just smelling amazing but on the dry down like I said I do think it gets way more feminine. Or just, it's unisex, you know? Then Bianco Latte from Giardini di Toscana. This is such a beautiful, creamy, lactonic, musky vanilla. So good. Does remind me of a latte with, like, uh, toffee nut syrup drizzled over top. This is so tasty. I don't know what's going on, though, with my spray. Like, what is happening there? That looks so weird. I have to clean it. I've never seen that happen with any of my bottles. Questionable. Longevity is top tier the way people say that it is. Next up is YSL Lieb Absolute Platine. This does smell very expensive. It's refined. It does smell very powdery and clean, a little soapy. I get when this opens up a good bit of the citrus and the lavender combination and to me this is not as sharp as in the original which I really do like. The thing is the fragrance has aldehydes and when I first saw that I was a little thrown off but it just works within this fragrance. It's very beautiful. I feel like if you're going out to an event that's more formal or if you're going to work every day this would be so pretty because there is a little bit of like a professional feel that I do get from this fragrance like I don't know the fragrance to me when I smell it kind of has like this level of authority but it's also to me very pretty coming from that lovely lavender and like the powdery quality it has. It's really nice, you guys. Then Cherry Ambition from The Seven Virtues. I put this in my last video, so just giving an honorable mention. So beautiful. I remember when this first came out being so excited. It's cherry, it's pink pepper, marshmallow, woods, everything with this fragrance. Musks. This is just very, very beautiful and so addictive to me for the colder months. Absolutely phenomenal. And this one has sour cherry and also cherry blossom. Then Eilish number three, I really enjoy. To me, this does remind me of Baccarat Rouge 540, but just like the spicier, little bit fruitier sister coming from that grapefruit. This is so nice. Every time I smell it, it does remind me of the holidays, like holiday parties for sure. And... Mm, it is unisex for sure, but I really, really enjoyed this one. And I think out of the three, number one still my favorite, but this one is really nice as well. I would say I like it better than number two, 100%. And I like this one and number one almost on the same level. I just wish the juice was a bit stronger with this fragrance. Devotion, I also just talked about. Beautiful if you like citrusy vanilla fragrances. Does really remind me of lemon candy with cream. 
and that orange blossom, which just adds that tinge of freshness. This is so delicious, and I've wore it so much. Can't wait to keep doing it in 2024. Then Juliet has a gun, Ode to Dullness, which I just think the name should be Ode to Cozy because this literally reminds me of a hug or being wrapped up in a really fuzzy, soft blanket. It's the perfect combination of cashmere wood and musk like i really do enjoy this fragrance i think it's so lovely for cuddling up and being around the house in the colder weather or being out running your errands like this for me yeah it's just so cuddly and so cozy and i think it's very beautiful for the colder weather or just any time you want to feel all cuddled up then lychee rose Uda perfume this one is from nest and it was kindly sent over to me this perfume is really pretty so for me the eden sparkling lychee that one is definitely more fruity whereas this one you get the raspberry and also of course the lychee but you also get the florals a bit more as well as that really nice pink champagne so to me this fragrance the texture of it actually comes off as very fizzy whereas i feel more so like the kaoli is more upbeat and like uplifting and bright like it just feels that way whereas this one physically it does smell very fizzy which i do like i feel like this fragrance also is a hangout with your girls type of fragrance but i would also just wear this also on an everyday basis i think it's very feminine very girly and again if you're somebody that wants the rose to be a bit more mature this fragrance would probably be really good for you like i said before the kaoli eden sparkling lychee comes off very very like candy like Whereas I feel like that one, you really do get the rose. Then speaking of candy, we have Fleur Mood Ring Eau de Perfume, which was kindly sent over to me by the brand. And unlike Father Figure, I actually really like this one. So to me, the fragrance is fun. It's fruity. It's floral. You do get that gummy bear smell there that I really do love. It's warm. It's citrusy. You do smell the jasmine and the orange blossom and the patchouli at the base is not too intense which I really do like but it just gives it a good amount of like grounding so for me this smells like wearable gummy treats and I really really do like that. I also just got this kit from Dead Cool which has milk extra milk and then also taunt so i do want to do a full video on here and also on tiktok going through each fragrance so i don't want to talk about them now but just know out of the three i would say my favorite is right now i would say taunt i really really like it a lot actually it's warm i feel like it kind of puts me in the same headspace not that they smell the same but as something like altair from parfums de marley so i've really been enjoying that fragrance their newest fragrance is called sunlit blooms and to me this is very beautiful it is a white floral fragrance with salt and also vanilla and i get everything that i just mentioned in the fragrance i think it's really nice you guys i also believe there's some orange blossom and overall i think for summer this one is gonna be a hit and the most recent launch in 2023 was you say le gourmand which you guys i just like i don't know if i want to get it it has nutella bread and some other notes and for me like i don't know you guys about the bread how that's gonna go savory sweet perfume i just feel like i don't want that all over my body but if you guys have smelled it please let me know your thoughts and opinions down below I love you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, do not forget to like, comment, subscribe, all the good things, and let me know what you guys want to see in 2024. Bye!